I all want to record a message titled Healing the Past and Shaping a Beautiful Future. And uh, this is really great news. It's too good to be true news. And uh, this is for anybody that's um, had trauma in the past or regrets things they have done or wishes they would have some, done something different in, in the past, or uh, you're worried about the future, what might happen, what might not happen. And the great part of it is, is uh, uh, everything that is and everything that could be is always available at all times in the spirit realm. And everything that ever existed is connected by the the infinite presence of God, the spirit of God, whatever you want to call it, has to be. Because everything that is is made out of the substance of the only thing that existed, which is the presence of God. And so when you realize that uh, uh, the spirit of God is infinite, it has all the qualities that we think of as God, but we don't often um, think of it as those qualities I share in because that spirit of God is in me, through me, and all around me. <laughs> There's only one life source and only one spirit. And uh, uh, what we do with that determines um, the kind of life we live. And so we are the infinite spirit, the spirit of God, the presence of God. <clears throat> and uh, we are that spirit of God having a human experience in a body, we have a body as a gift, we have uh, our mind as a gift, and we have our emotions as a gift to experience what it's like to, to be God in this limited body. But the Spirit of God is not limited, it's infinite. And let me just show you something. I looked that up, infinite, and this may help, I'm going to share my screen with you. I just put in infinite, and this was the first definition that came up. And uh, this is, I think, pretty powerful. <clears throat> Oops, wrong share. Sorry, guys. This is what I want to share. There we go. All right. So infinite, having no boundaries or limits, impossible to measure or calculate. Synonym is incalculable. Two, immeasurably greater, large, boundless, infinite patience, as discovery of infinite importance as an example. Three, existing beyond or being greater than any arbitrarily large value. Four, unlimited and spatial extent meaning it's infinite space. There's nothing that contains it because it's the pure presence of God. Number five, of or relating to a set capable of being put into one-to-one -one correspondence with a proper subset of itself. <clears throat> Six, unlimited or boundless in time or space. So not only is it unlimited space, it's unlimited time, infinite duration or distance, meaning you can't measure it because it's infinite, it's infinity. Seven, without limit in power, capacity, knowledge, or excellence, boundless, immeasurably or inconceivably great, perfect, <clears throat> opposed to finite, <laughs> the infinite wisdom and goodness of God. That's the spirit of God in us. It has no limits spatially or time-wise. Now, here's what's really interesting is uh, what quantum physics and quantum entanglement are showing and I, I shared in the email and the Facebook post that this is our best attempt to explain this infinite presence of God and the effects of it. We None of us can explain how it works. We can just explain that it works and how to take advantage of it. Just as I've said, you can take an unlimited amount of money, an unlimited budget, unlimited time, every scientist in the world, the greatest, and go, why, where does the the life energy come from in a uh, in a hay seed or in a um, corn seed or in the, the seed of a flower. Looks like there's nothing in there, but somehow all of a sudden that seed uh, springs to life. Or what is it? How, how is it that uh, in intimacy, a male seed and the female egg come together in this flash of light and somehow create trillions of, of cells where we have a nervous system, we have an eyeball, and uh, uh, there's 80 trillion electrical impulses, transactions per second, every second. And every second, 25 million cells die, flake away, and in the same second, one 1,000, 25 million new cells are created. What is this life source? Like I said, none of us can explain it, but what we are doing is is sharing how infinite, how boundless, how limitless this it is. And here's the thing I wanted to share with you is uh, if you were God, 
could you change something in the past? Of course you could. Could you create a future you desired? Of course you could. Now, once you grab a hold of this idea that, wait a minute, I'm not this, this individual separated from the power of God that religions taught me. I am the infinite presence of God in a body that has a mind, that has emotions, that we have the ability to shape life how we would like it. So <laughs> what's really cool is I'm going to share with you what you do now. Quantum physics calls this quantum entanglement. And it basically says this, anytime two things are connected, they're always connected, no matter how far away they are in space and time. Meaning uh, what you do today actually heals the past and creates a beautiful future. Because the change in one dimension, there's no, there's no, there's no beginning, there's no end in this infinite time, this Ionian eternal life that we talk about, this infinite life. And when you change one, uh, if everything's connected, basically it's saying when you change it in one place, it actually changes it in the other place. When you change it in one period of time, it actually changes it in all periods of time. Now, that sounds crazy, but it's crazy good news. Let me share this with you. This is from The Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza. And this is the, the scientific experiment I want to... I want uh, you to get a hold of. Now, you don't have to understand how this works. Most of us, we can't. We just know that it works. So just as, how do you, how do you study God? You know, how do you have a Bible study? <laughs> because they've reduced God to a book, not understanding that Debar is entering into the nature of the Father. What comes from the doorway of man is the nature of the Father, into a literal book. And it's not a book, guys. So it says, can we affect the past? Now, let me let me read this to you. Since we're all interconnected across distance and time, does this suggest that our thoughts and feelings can influence events in the past as well as those we desire in the future? In July 2000, Israeli doctor Leonard Leibovitchi, I looked it up, there's multiple ways to pronounce it. One is Leibovitchi, conducted a double-blind, randomized, controlled trial involving 3,393 hospital patients, dividing into a control group that wasn't prayed for and an intercession group that a group that knew how to pray um, prayed for. He set out to see whether prayer could have an effect on their condition. Prayer experiments are great examples of mind-affecting matter at a distance, meaning people that know how to feel the health and feel feel the, the person enjoying health actually affect that person outside of space and time. But stay with me here, because everything is not always what it seems. Leibovitchi selected patients who had suffered sepsis and infection while hospitalized. He randomly designated half the patients to have prayers said for them, while the other half were not prayed for. He compared the results in three categories, how long fever lasted, length of hospital stay, and how many died as a result of the infection. I'm going to share one little piece on this too, which is really interesting. They The prayed for benefited from an earlier decrease in fever, meaning they got their fever decreased faster, and a shorter hospitaliz hospitalization time. The difference in the number of deaths among the prayed for and not prayed for groups was not statistically significant, although better in the prayed for group. Now, let me explain this. So obviously what we would expect if we actually believe we have access and oneness with God, that what we do uh, in sharing the attributes of God, what we experience in our mind and emotions actually changes things which is prayer. We're actually tapping into the infinite, unlimited power, knowledge, and perfection of God. All right. Now, as, as we shared before in dying to be me, uh, she shared uh, when, she, when people are on the edge of that uh, um, stepping out of this flesh realm into the eternal Ionian life or spiritual life, is you still have a decision that's very fascinating. She said, it was very clear to me. The presence of God said, here, here's your choice. You can either go back and uh, uh, spend time in this body, <clears throat> or you can step into eternity. And your decision in this moment will affect the results previously. Meaning, if she decided to stay the scans, her hospital scans, would say she's getting better and her organs started to increase. Her decision actually affected uh, instruments and measurements from these medical devices and tests that were performed before. Or if she said, you know what, um, I'm done with this limited, this limited flesh, 
I'm going to Exodus, which is what the whole book of Exodus is about, is what is what what frees ourselves from this limited body where we're into this eternal Ionian life, not bound hand and foot, not tied to this body. We're we're free. What comes from it? This we the in fact that as the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel, maybe I'll do a, a message on that, is the spirit realm where all of us uh, are free from this body and experience eternal life. But uh, if she, if they decided to uh, step into eternity, what would say those hospital tests and those physical exams would say, oh, her organs shut down. So even then, what she did in that moment affected what the results were going to say, meaning it affected time and results. Very interesting. So hang with me here. <clears throat> That's a powerful demonstration of the benefits of prayer and how we can send an intention out into the quantum field. We could call that the spirit realm or the presence of God where everything and every possibility exists with no limits through our thoughts and feelings, meaning our thoughts and feelings. The crazy part of this whole thing, guys, is our thoughts and feelings, what we decide to pay attention to and what we decide to feel actually affects the physical realm. However, there's one additional element to the story that you should know about. Did it strike you as slightly odd that in July 2000, a hospital would have more than 3,000 cases of infection at once? Was it very poorly sterilized place or was some kind of contagion running rampant? Okay, <laughs> here's where it gets crazy good. Actually, those who were praying weren't praying for patients who were infected in 2000 when they were praying. Instead, unbeknownst to them, they were praying for lists of people who have been randomly selected Remember, a double-blind study randomly selected with a control group beyond all probabilities. So this is a true experiment, scientific experiment. Praying for lists of people who had been in the hospital from 1990 to 1996, four to 10 years prior to the experiment. The prayed for patients actually got better during the 1990s from the experiment conducted years later in 2000. This is so huge, guys. And we'll talk about the implications here. Let me say this another way. The patients who were prayed for in 2000 all showed measurable changes in health, but those changes took effect years before. A statistical analysis of this experiment proved that the effects were far beyond coincidence. This demonstrates that our intentions, our thoughts, and our feelings, basically our prayers and meditations, guys. Our prayers and meditations not only affect our present, but also our future, but they can actually affect our past as well. Now, this leads us to the question, if you were to pray or focus your intention for a better life for yourself today, it actually affects your past, present, and future. Mm -mm -mm. Now, listen to this. Let me tell you that this quantum entanglement, let's just, what they're saying, guys, is this spirit realm has no time. You can choose to experience anything right now in your mind and your emotions, which is ek kaleo, which is ekklesia, which is church. Ek is you should behold the covering of God, the creative ability between you and God, and kaleo, the nature or name that comes from the inside out. That's actually what it is. It's not the building that people go to where like people go, oh, I'm from the first Methodist church of whatever. That has nothing to do with what the scripture talks about church. Church is at kaleo, the nature that comes from the inside out between the intimacy between you and God. You shall behold the kappa, kaf. The covering, as I've shown you in Hebrew, Kaf says it takes it from potential, any potential exists, and brings it into poel, actual physical experience. <laughs> Everything returns after its kind. So this is kind of interesting. So this, let me just talk to you about quantum entanglement. So it says you are consciousness or you are the spirit of God. You are the infinite being. You are the presence of God using a body and a brain to express different levels of mind. <clears throat> another way at how we, another way to look at how humans in the quantum field, the spirit realm are, con are interconnected. I mean, everything that is, is connected in the spirit realm through the concept of quantum entanglement or quantum non-local connection. Essentially, once two particles can be initially linked in some way, they will be always bonded together, no matter where they are in space or time. Now, this is mind bender. Like I said, you don't have to understand it. Just know that it is. As a result, anything that is done to one particle will be done to the other, even though they are separated from one another. 
This means that since we too are made up of particles, we are all implicitly connected beyond space and time. What we do unto others, we actually do unto ourselves. Think, to, think about the implications of this. If you can wrap your mind around this concept, then you have to agree that the you that exists in the future is already connected to the you that is now, and I would just say it again, and the you that was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, where you have your regrets, where you go, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done this. So it turns out, guys, is uh, here's what's really fascinating. Just as this experiment was performed, these people, unbeknownst to them, got together in year 2000. They randomized these 3,000 patients and said, hey, we're going to pray for this group. <clears throat> Those people that were prayed for got better in 1990, 90, what was it, 90, 1990 to 96. They actually got better, even though people were praying for them four to 10 years before, well, four to 10 years later, <laughs> my mind's starting to to get in the way here. So, but those changes took effect four to 10 years before in our timeline. In God, there's no time. He's outside of time. It's infinite. So meaning this, what you do today will heal the past because once something's put together, the, the past you is connected to the you that's right now and is also connected to the you that's going to be 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. And what you do today changes every particle exactly no matter where it is in space and time it actually means you can heal everything and bring everything into perfection is that too good to be true news or what so let me just read this i've read this to you but it's so fitting this is from neville it says the purpose is to show you how to use your imagination or the anointing within to achieve every desire you have now I've shown you this before, Yatsar. Um, let me pull this up once. <clears throat> All right, Yatsar. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the noun is 3336, Yatsar. It's a form of framing of a purpose. And if you go look at it, it's the imagination, the imagination of a man's heart, their intention, <clears throat> all the imaginations to form, frame, purpose, like pottery formed by the potter. Um, what is framed in the mind, imagination, you devise or purpose. You, you go, this is, this is what I'm going to put my attention on. And the quantum physics, the quantum science says, when we pay attention to something, and feel the hard energy as if it's already real, it actually brings it into the physical realm. Scripture's talking about this, Yatsar. Something framed, a thing framed, your imagination, the mind, the work, the finished work of the holiest of holies, which is right up here, guys. So the noun is your imagination. Now the verb is the same. It's yod, the deed done, zade, which is like a man laying down. It's a hook, it's desire. And resh is the highest point of man or the head. So the verb, at the same letters, yad, zade, resh, it means you're, you are imagining, and when you're imagining, you're forming and fashioning. That's how things are created. You take it from potential energy, just like potter's clay, and bring it into physical reality. So, and let me just show you. So it's yod, yod, zade, resh, yod, zade, resh. That's the verb. When you imagine, it's you it's you imagining the verb, action, and then the noun are the same letters. It's your imagination, which is the imagination of the heart and mind. What you It's when you're imagining what you do. It forms and fashions like potter's clay. Now, <laughs> let me, this, this is so cool. <clears throat> let me show you different. Uh, and you can just look up Hebrew pictograms. This is one that pulls up. Uh, maybe I'll make this a little bigger for you. So Yod, it's 10. Everywhere in 10, guys, it says the seed is released, the deed has been done, the work has been done. It's a picture of a hand. <laughs> and so it says to work, a deed done, finished work. It means the seed has been released. The intimacy has been completed, Yod. When you go look up Yod, even like it says 12 disciples, 
It's not 12 guys sitting around being in a discipleship class. That's what religion has turned it into. Imagine if we taught them what it actually says. You can't experience God studying a book, guys, because it's not even talking about that. You don't go to discipleship class. Well, actually, you do. Actually, you do. Because disciple means you've come to know, which means you have intimacy. Some, some of you went to fifth grade uh, uh, education class in school where they taught you, hey, this is what happens when intimacy is completed, when the deed is done. But it says 12 disciples. It says duo deco. Duo is two. The house, the body, the household, the family within. And yod, the deed is done. And it says everywhere in Scripture, it says double entendre, sexually explicit. Aha, I know what that means. Once this, once the deed is done, the work is done, the shout of God, the word of God, the nature of God that comes out of the doorway, which is the bar, is released, and it shall not return void. It actually creates every seed returns after its kind. So that's the strength of God. The life is in the covenant, the seed that's released. So that's yod, zade is a fish hook to pull towards something escapable, desire, trouble, to harvest, or to righteous, to hunt, and race the head of a person. What is the highest, most important, or the chief? So remember it said, your imagination is Yatsar. So it's the finished work that draws and pulls your desire to you of the highest point of man, what you do in your head. Literally, that's what it says in Scripture as well. Now, really cool if you get it. So let me just read this about Neville again. How to use your imagination, which in Hebrew is called Yatsar. What you do in here, guys, today actually heals the past and creates the future. So why not choose any possibility? Every possibility exists. It says, purpose is to show you how to use your imagination. The mind is what scripture says, the imagination, to achieve any desire you have. Most people are totally unaware of the creative power of imagination within and bow before the dictates of fact, accept life and what they perceive with their senses. When you discover the creative power within yourself, which is what it says over and over and over, go look up all the capital his and hymns that they translate about a person. Guys, in the Greek, it says, Atus, atun, ha -ato, you shall behold the creative ability of God within yourself. It's not believing in something outside of you. It says you shall experience the creative ability of the intimacy between you and God or auto yourself. When you discover the creative power within yourself, you will boldly assert the supremacy of imagination and put all things into subjection to it. There is nothing under heaven that is not plastic as potter's clay to the shaping touch of the spirit of imagination. What you do right now, what you pay attention to and the emotion you allow yourself to feel, these heartfelt emotions, actually changes it in all places and times. Because once something's connected, quantum physics has shown this, it's always connected. What you do to one, one atom has the same effect in all atoms because everything's connected, regardless in space and time. So what you experience today, when you, when you decide to go, you know what? I'm tired of worrying. I'm tired of being fearful. I'm exhausted. I, I wish this would have been different. I wish this, I wouldn't have made this mistake. I wish I would have done this. Now you really understand this. We we hear things like this. You can't change the past. What we're finding out is the spirit of God is limitless. Of course you can. That's what's so crazy good about this, guys. It actually heals the past. So it says not, there's nothing under heaven that's a plastic as powder's clay to the shaping touch of your imagination. The natural man, meaning when we're when we're going, I don't know how this is going to happen. I wish this wouldn't be. I can't change the past. Oh, I wish I could have that decision back. Oh, I wish I wouldn't have done this. Or, oh, I'm so worried about what's going to happen in the future. I'm so worried about my kids. I'm so worried about my money. I'm so worried about my health. No, no, no. You can go, wait a minute. I have the Yatsar, the shaping spirit of the, of the power of God within me. And what I choose to pay attention on today, and I allow my heartfelt emotions to experience as if it's real, how grateful would you be knowing that every prayer is answered, guys? Knowing that love is responsive like we've been talking about. The crazy part is that every atom in the universe is connected by this spirit, this presence of God that's infinite, it's boundless. Doesn't matter if it happened in the past or whatever, what's going to happen in the future. What you to today, what you do today affects every 
particle, physical thing, regardless of time and space. It heals the past, creates a beautiful future. As science is sharing this, I'm not I'm not making this up going, oh, that's, that's too good to be true. The spiritual man creates its own reality. This is the difference between religion. Religion says, I'm separated from God. I must do these things for, for God to be pleased with me. Spirituality, awakening, knowing who you are is, I realize I'm one with God. And what I choose to pay attention to and, and allow these heartfelt emotions of gratitude, how awesome it is to experience my dream life right now, actually heals the past, creates the beautiful future just by what I do today, because it's infinite. There's no space or time. There's no beginning. There's no end. What I do in one space and time affects every space and time as if that's what's happening in all space and time. So in summary, if you find yourself regretting things you did in the past or wish you could change things, guess what? <laughs> things aren't always the way they seem. You can't change the past now seems to be not so true. What you do in one space and time affects all spaces and times. What you do today affects what you did 10 years ago and affects what you're going to experience 10 years from now. So there's no need to worry about the future either. You might as well, pay, if every possibility exists and what we pay attention to and allow ourselves to have the heartfelt emotions as if it's real right now, the best way to do it, guys, is get out of this analytical mind, this limited self. And the best way to do that is you can use the nine-minute prayer with, praying with the energy of God. You can use uh, any meditation that you find helpful where you really get your attention off all of your problems, all your regrets, all your worries, and allow yourself to experience as if it's real right now. That taps you into the infinite presence of God. <clears throat> and let me just remind you what it says again. The infinite presence of God, which we would call the spirit realm, the spirit of God, has no boundaries or limits. It's unlimited in, in an infinite length of in, a line of infinite length. It takes care of all times of your life. It's it's unlimited or boundless in time or space. So it takes care of every aspect of your life, as well as all times of your life. Without limit in power, capacity, knowledge, excellence, boundless, immeasurable, inconceivably great in perfection. This is the infinite wisdom and goodness of God, boundlessly perfect. Mm -mm -mm. So, like I said, as you can get into that nine-minute praying with the energy of God or any other prayer or meditation, if, you, if every possibility exists, because energy equals material world, material world equals energy, and energy, like, we, I come from a science background. One of the first things they tell you is energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Why? Because it's the presence of God. We see how much energy is when you when you when you split or pierce one atom, which is all the imagery in the Bible where it says day. It was this imagery of the light of God piercing darkness, like when the when the day starts to happen. And there's this heat and passion of God that rises up just like the sun. And once it hits the peak which is race, the highest point of man, guess what? The seed is released, and then what happens? It rests. But creation has happened. You will behold the creative ability of what comes from the finished work or the release of, release of God. So you can choose any possibility. You don't have to worry about the past. You don't have to uh, or regret the past or worry about the future. You can choose to pay attention to and allow yourself to experience anything you desire right now. And so, therefore, you should allow yourself to pay attention to the, the perfect life. If I had a magic wand, how would I, what would the perfect life look like to me? What would it feel like? Come on, just really open up and allow your heart to experience what that feels like if you were living the perfect life where everything works in your life, guys. How grateful would you be knowing that all of your prayers are answered and love is responsive, that every atom in the universe responds to you. No matter what you did in the past or what the future is going to look like, what you do today heals all of it in all spaces and times. Imagine how grateful you'd be if you really knew how good this was. Thank you, Father, how good this is. I'm so grateful for this abundance. I'm so grateful for this divine health. I'm so grateful for loving relationships. What you do right now heals it. Think about the implications of that, guys. If there's if there's hurt relationships, if there's things that you would, that would be impossible 
to heal that. There's trauma. No, no, no. What you do today has the effect in all spaces and times. It actually takes care of it, just like the patients. They were prayed for in 2000, but got better in 1994, <laughs> 1990 to 94, because what you do today affects all time, future, past. So it actually is, There's you might as well just place all of your attention on what the, the, the divine life looks like today, guys, because it'll heal all trauma and create a beautiful life for you. That's the infinite presence of God. It knows no limits in space or time, but what you do in one space and time heals as if those other spaces at times never existed. It brings everything into the perfection of God. Boy, I hope that helps. It's kind of difficult to wrap your arms around this. Like I said, you don't have to necessarily understand it all. Just know, you mean I can choose to pay attention to only the perfect life right now, and it's as if all my mistakes were never made? Yep, that's how truly good the good news of God is.